All right. Hi everybody. Just got in another workout. I uh, I warmed up for uh, for 20 minutes and next ran in place uh, for 30 minutes and this was all continuous so the total time was 50 minutes. So here I'm doing another uh, unedited, spontaneous, unplanned uh, video recording and uh, this time I'm using my Samsung Samsung Galaxy Tab S uh, tablet which is uh, something a bit different this time. I'm going to be trying some different things I think if I can get around to it but this is simple and easy. I should be able to uh, upload to YouTube directly from this tablet so I don't have to do a lot of complicated transferring. So today uh, I'm going to do the usual thing. I'm just going to talk and uh, I don't really have anything like super planned out but I've been thinking about a few things. I have some of my own ideas for new Olympic sports. So uh, you know over the years, over the over the leap years of the decades or whatever, people are gradually adding on uh, you know, new Olympic events. So here are some that I thought about. Some of these are sort of uh, a step backwards into time. And uh, one of them, okay, is uh, you know when they have the, uh, the high jump, right? Well, it used to be they would sort of scissor over and go over sideways, but I don't know when they started using these big mats so people would land on their bodies, like on their sides or on their backs or whatever. And then uh, they had the Fosbury flop. It was like a new technique where, where they went over the high jump backwards, right? Well, I have this new idea. It's called, um, I don't know, I don't really have a name for it, but you would, what you would do is you would do the high jump, and you have a bar or something, or you could have an electronic eye or whatever. I don't know how they would do it, but, uh, you know, it could be electronic. You don't have to have a physical bar. And I'll explain why, because you could get hurt in this type of jump. But you jump, and you have to land on your feet, and you don't have a mat you, to land on your, you know, that you can use to land with, on your body, like on your back or your side or your front. You have to land on your feet. Now, one way they could do this is put something like a gym mat, you know, like the gymnasts use for their floor exercises or whatever, so it would have some softness. But you would have to go over and land on your feet, and they would have to have judges to decide if you, like, if you goofed, like you couldn't touch the ground with your hand after you landed or your hands or your fingers or anything. But they can judge this sort of thing because they have Olympics, uh, Olympic judges for things like diving, and, uh, and gymnastics and so on. So they do have the ability to judge this and they can use like, you know, video and film. But so, so you'd have to go over the bar, uh, take off on your feet and land on your feet and not touch the ground any other way other than with your feet. After you, like if your knee touched the ground, then you would, it would be like a zero, like as if you didn't make the height or something. So you would have to land on your feet. Now, why did I have this idea? The idea is that this is something practically applicable to reality. I mean, how many times, like if you're out, you know, playing around or doing your thing outdoors and you want to jump over something, how many times do you jump and land on your side or your back or your front or your knees? I mean, you would break your bones, right? It would give you serious, serious injuries. You could have tissue injuries. You could injure your, your muscles, your ligaments, your tendons, your connective tissues. You get bruises. Who knows what? So what I'm saying is, uh, you get fractures, you know, maybe. So, so you know, uh, it wouldn't be nice to land on your body on the hard ground, on the like on the concrete or the asphalt or even the grass. So in real life, you know, if we're going to jump, we're going to land on our feet, right? So, I mean, you can land on your feet and then roll onto your hands, you know, but uh, really you have to have a standard somewhere. So you could have this new jump where you have to land on your feet. And then that could be an addition to the, to the pre-existing, you know, high jump. Another one that came up, this is not one of my main ones, but since we're talking about jumps, okay, the pole vault, right? It's straight up, more or less. But they could have a pole vault. Okay, they have, like, the two long jumps already. They have the running long jump and then the running triple long jump. Well, they could have the pole vault long jump where, okay, they got this socket where the pole goes in with the regular pole vault now, right? So the pole goes in, and you this would have to be regulated. Like, the poles would all have to be, like, the same length and the same... Uh, you know, uh, or they could do it differently, I don't know, but the same uh, strength and, you know, specification, but it's how far over land you pole vault. So your pole stays in that socket, just like with the regular vertical pole jump, but you you have like a sand trap or whatever where you're, you know, that tells you how far somebody jumps. So you have like the, the horizontal pole vault, and this would represent like jumping over a stream or something using the pole. You know, you run forward with the pole, throw it in, you know, jam it into the socket, push yourself up and over and then you land on the other side of the stream or or wait maybe it's a canyon or some goofy thing like that but whatever it is okay so that's that's not one of my main ideas and the next thing I wanted to talk about is the sprints okay so what we have right you can tell I've been watching the Olympics 
<laughs> so we have today we have the sprints and they have these blocks these starting blocks and they're really really unnatural I mean if you're gonna go sprint out in reality naturally you know you would never use a starting block and one of the advantages of starting blocks is they can you know enable the electronic timing better because I guess it shows you you know when they fall start right because there's electronic connections or something but there might be ways around that well, like with electric eyes or something like that or other sensory equipment so this I have two ideas for the sprint three ideas actually for this for the new types of sprints okay let's say it's 100 meters one of them is from a standing start that's a lot more natural like if you're out in your reality in real life and you want to sprint you don't get down in some blocks there aren't any blocks there aren't anything like it I mean if you found a tree stump or something even that would be just too goofy you just wouldn't do that you would you would sprint from a standing start but actually so how they would do this uh, they have to have sophisticated electronic equipment to judge if anybody false started so maybe they would have like a an electric eye beam or something from the line and if your foot crossed over the line before like a you know a certain number of thousands of seconds passed after this gun went off then you would have false started maybe but uh, sounds fair to me okay there's another one uh, that is even more natural because how often if you're gonna sprint right if you're off outdoors doing something and suddenly you need to sprint you don't really do it from a standing start like let's say there's a loose dog rushing at you you don't just run from a standing start or you upset a wasp's nest or a bee's nest or something it isn't really from a standing start it's from a walking start so here's the next one this is kinda complicated but it makes sense to me I've, I've thought this through okay you have like a five or ten meter interval before you get to the starting line okay and you are walking in that interval so there's an electric eye that goes off or something everybody starts together that would be better because if you start and you do it like time trials like on a bicycle race where everybody starts separately and does the whole thing separately problem with that is the wind conditions vary so different people would have different wind conditions so somebody would have like a you know a headwind and somebody would have a tailwind or less of a headwind or more of a tailwind so the problem with all that is uh, that you um, it wouldn't be fair so you've all got to start together but here's the way they could do it they could have the electronic equipment set up to look at each lane separately now what it would be would be you've all got to start walking at the same time and you can't exceed a, a particular number of a particular speed in the in the uh, in the uh, in the walking zone so for example let's say you have five seconds in the walking zone and it's like a five meter or ten meter zone or whatever I don't know how many seconds would be the right amount but it'd be like a good walking speed like three miles an hour or four miles an hour but you couldn't go faster than let's say four miles an hour 15 minutes to the mile or 20 minutes to the mile wherever you couldn't go faster than 15 minutes per mile in the walking zone so you would have to learn how to regulate that but you can learn that sort of thing just the way like long jumpers when they run up they learn how to regulate where they take off their foot has to take off if they if they take off beyond a particular line then they're disqualified well you can regulate how fast you walk up to the starting line so you start yourself everybody starts together and then you sprint and it's all electronically timed like from the minute your foot your your foot crosses over your first foot crosses over the starting line then that starts it and then when you go over the finish line that's timed as usual you know uh, so what I'm saying is you can't go through the, the the walk zone like five or ten meters or whatever any faster than a particular speed or you'll be disqualified but you've all got to start together and then you go up and then you're each timed individually electronically it can be done believe me so you walk through this walk zone at let's like, say three or four miles an hour or whatever but you can't walk through it any faster than a particular speed it could be five miles an hour that's pretty fast walking but let's say you can't walk through it faster than three and a half miles an hour or four miles an hour and then when you get to the start there's still ways to cheat it though unfortunately like you could walk through some of it slow and some of it fast like you could go through the first half of it really slow and then the last half of it really fast so that'd be cheating so in a way I just realized while I'm making this video that that wouldn't work but theoretically if you could have a way to time it from a walk then that would be a lot more natural now here's the third type of sprint I invented this is not really a new idea but you could have like a start 10 or 20 meters behind the starting line and then you're just electronically timed for the whole 100 meters or they could shorten it to 80 meters or 60 meters but what you're timed for is you're sprinting from a full sprint so so it's all electronically timed but you'd have to pretty much start together because like I said there would be different wind conditions for different people if you all started separately but the idea would be that 
you are timed from a full sprint when you reach the starting line. So you go over the starting line at a full sprint and then you're timed electronically from that moment all the way to the finish line. So you actually are timed for like 60 meters. So it would be like the even faster than it is now and even more sophisticated because they're already using sophisticated electronic equipment, you know, to time like the with the blocks and all that. So this would even be more electronic. But you would be timed just absolutely how fast from a from a running start that you could run, let's say whatever distance, be it you know uh, 100 meters, 80 meters, 60 meters, or whatever. So that's my uh, that's my that's another Olympic idea. I had some other ideas, but I don't want to get too, too sidetracked. I mean, this is not a really original. Somebody would have to have thought about this one before, but they could add like a half marathon or a 20k running race. And I don't know if that would be a road race or or a uh, track race in there, but that's not that somebody would surely have thought about that one before. There are lots of new sports, and you know, obviously, over the years, more will be added. That's just been the case, the trend, the tradition. Well, I had a lot to talk about, but I don't want to talk too long. Uh, I guess I'll cut it at this, but I'm making my video, I had my workout. I really have a lot of different things I would like to talk about, but I'm going to cut out. So, I hope you enjoy this. Have a great time, and uh, whatever, you know. <laughs>